In the past few years, foreign markets, China, India, several others, have been exploding in growth. U.S. manufacturers, kind of wanting to ride that wave, so have been spending untold billions to either buy companies in those areas or just expand there. In a way, they've also turned their backs on the slower, more mature U.S. market. Well, it turns out there was a flaw in that kind of strategy. Business still needs America. That was the headline in a column in Cranes written by columnist Joe Cahill. And I think, Joe, it's kind of easy to understand why companies first wanted to expand there. You're a U.S.-based company. You want to get in where the action's hot. Right. And emerging markets overseas like China and India have seen much faster growth than, than the U.S. You have emerging middle-class consumers there that are hungering for the kinds of consumer goods that we've had here in the U.S. for years. You've got housing markets exploding. And over the long term, there will be faster growth there than there is in, in the U.S. So you saw companies like Caterpillar, Mondelez, Abbott Labs, um, McDonald's focus much more on those markets as opposed to the domestic market. But what we're seeing now is that these overseas markets that are so attractive because of their long-term growth rate can also be volatile and unpredictable, and they're not necessarily getting the kind of numbers there that they had hoped for early on, while in the U.S., there's still a lot of impact on their business. McDonald's, for example, still gets a third of its business from the U.S., and the U.S. has been doing poorly, and that's pulling down their overall results. Joe, it's interesting because it reminds me sort of as the difference between a long-term investing strategy for somebody who is planning for retirement as opposed to the quick gains that you can get by finding some hotshot company in the short term. Right, right. It's a very risky play if you're, if you're looking at short-term numbers overseas because you don't know what's going to happen. Abbott Labs, for example, had a very strong position position in China, which is a big growing market where it wants to sell a lot of infant formula. And it looked like everything was going to be great there for them after they spun off their domestically oriented pharmaceutical business to focus on the overseas markets. But within the first year after the spin-off, the Chinese authorities leveled some dubious charges of price fixing and raised quality concerns about the infant formula being sold by overseas suppliers and suddenly that growth came to a halt. Now that'll be temporary but that's not in the in the plan and in the meantime its business in the US has been has been tanking. Yeah well now they learned they gotta play both markets but you have to know what you're doing. All right Joe, yeah. thanks so much. Okay.